Hey, how's it going everyone? Steve here from CG Geek. Today we're not really doing anything that exciting, just, I don't know, blowing up the world? With visual effects, of course. Jeez, what, what were you thinking? Come on, 2020 wasn't that bad. <laughs> Thanks to NordPass for sponsoring this video. Stay tuned to learn how you can get 70% off their two-year plan. So I've heard a lot of you guys requesting some more visual effects tutorials on the channel, so I thought I'd take a break from sucky animations and teach some visual effects. Speaking of sucky animation, new t-shirt design, actually my first ever. You can check it out with the link in the description below. It actually makes a great gift for all your friends that suck at animations. We're gonna be using Blender today because it's free and awesome and anyone can use it. So download Blender 2.9 if you haven't already. We'll be starting with the earth you see here. This was created in our how to create the world in one minute tutorial already on the channel. You guys can check it out and create your own if you want. Or since it's a season for giving, I'll be giving away this finished file that's normally available on Patreon to all of you guys with the link in the description below. All I ask in return is that maybe you could hit that subscribe button and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. I've noticed that only 20% of my viewers are subscribed, so it would mean the world to me, literally, if you'd hit that subscribe button and maybe you'll like the content that you see. All right, so out here in the universe, what we're gonna do is start by making sure that you're rendering with cycles and that you're rendering on the GPU if you have a computer that can render with GPU. I'm actually using the RTX 3090. It's incredibly fast and if you have an RTX card, you can enable optics in the user settings and render up to three times faster in cases. And while you're in the user preferences, go ahead and enable the cell fracture add-on because we're gonna be using that right away. So for starters, you can turn off the visibility of the clouds and then just select the world model and add a particle system to it. Change the end frame to one. This will be used in the cell fracture add-on to shatter the mesh. Next up, you can select the annotation tool and make sure the placement is set to surface. Now you can just start scribbling some lines across your earth. This is gonna be determining where you want more cell fracturing to happen for more detail in the shatter. Then you can either go object down to quick effects and choose cell fracture or just hit F3 and start typing in cell fracture to bring up the cell fracture menu. Here you're gonna wanna switch it to own particles and then hold shift and also click annotation pencil. So it uses the particle system and that drawing we just used to determine where the planet will shatter. Now you wanna crank the source limit up to something pretty high like 1200 because we're using a thousand particles and give it a bit of noise, something like 0.3 is fine. You can also get some more shattering by enabling recursive, changing this to one and giving it a source limit of something like 16. And lastly, if you want to give the inside of the planet a different material, you can change the material output here to one. So with that much shattering, it might take a minute or two to calculate now, but after a bit, you can see we have a shattered mesh. You can hide the original world now by grabbing it and hitting H. And then if you hit N to bring up the properties tab, you can also hide the annotation tool at the bottom. So now let's add physics to all of these shards by going object, down to rigid body and choosing add active. Right off the bat now, if you hit play in your timeline, you can see it is breaking up, just not really the way we want it. To give it even more realistic physics, with them all selected still, go rigid body, calculate mass, and then choose something like granite broken. This will give the heavier shards more weight than the lighter shards. Speaking about weight though, we don't actually want any gravity because we're out in space here. So jumping to the rigid body world settings, drop down field weights and give it a zero on the gravity. Now selecting all those shards again, we're gonna go object rigid body one more time and choose connect. This will again take about a minute or so. As you can see, we now have a bunch of constraints for all those shards. So just select one of them and then hit A to select everything else. And if you jump down to the physics properties, now you can change a few of these settings. For starters, we'll uncheck disable collisions and then right click copy to selected to add that change to all of the other objects. Now you can choose breakable and then copy that to select it as well. So now the shards will hold together until we have something with some force hit them. Now back in the scene settings, you're gonna wanna select split impulse. This will prevent everything from blowing up right off the bat. Also smart to save your project here. Now lastly, to make things seem bigger, we actually wanna slow the simulation down. So change the speed here to 0.2. Now we can add some objects to cause destruction. So I'm gonna go shift A and add in a mesh cone. I'll scale it up real big and then in the physics panel, give it rigid body physics. Here I'm gonna check animated and then give it the collision shape of cone. Then I can just position it inside of the sphere and start doing some keyframing. So with automatic keyframing enabled, I'm gonna give it a keyframe on frame one, move forward about 50 to 60 keyframes and poke it outside of the sphere a bit. Now I'm just gonna duplicate that cone and do it a few more times, adding keyframes a bit further down in our timeline and moving it to blow up a different section of the sphere this time. This will cause like random explosions to go off on the planet, making it look more realistic. I've just keyframe animated the cone poking out of the planet a few times now at different positions. It really doesn't have to poke out much to cause a lot of destruction. And here you can see we have our first playback that's looking pretty 
cool, actually maybe too destructive, so I might tone back that keyframing a little bit. And that's looking pretty destructive right there. So now I'm gonna duplicate the cone one more time with Shift D, and I'm gonna delete the keyframes by hitting X in the timeline. And this is going to be the ultimate destruction now to the planet. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and duplicate this cone three times on this object. I'm gonna change the collision shape to convex hull. Now I'm just gonna keyframe animate it starting from right to left a bit further on in our timeline to just wreck through the center of the planet here. As you can see, just tweaking the animation a little bit, scaling it down to be more of like a blade to just cut through the center of the planet as our last object of destruction. But we can add even more detail now to the destruction here. I'm gonna do this by going Shift A and adding an icosphere, scaling it up to be a bit smaller than the planet and placing it inside of it. Here I'm gonna give this a particle system with about 10,000 particles. We're gonna start and end at frame one again, and we'll just give it a lifetime of 250 frames. And then you can give that lifetime a little bit of randomness. Now I'm just going to select a few of the shards on our planet and duplicate them with Shift D, moving them out of frame and then hitting Control G to create a group. I'll just name it something like shards. And then back in our Icosphere particle system under render, we can choose collection and then that collection will be those shards. Here I'll crank the scale up to something like 0.1 and give it 0.9 random scale. At the bottom of the settings, you also want to disable gravity under the field weights. And then lastly, you're gonna to wanna to select your destructive cones and add in the collision physics on all of them. This will give it collisions with these particles. So cranking that up to about 50,000 particles, if we bake our simulation in the scene settings, you can see now that we have a pretty good simulation with some extra small particles in there adding to the detail. Oh hey, it's time to thank this video sponsor, NordPass. NordPass is the next generation password manager powered by NordVPN's cybersecurity professionals. NordPass turns the web into a safe and secure, easy experience by storing all your passwords and important data in an encrypted secure vault that only you can easily access with a single master password. So now when you're creating new accounts online, NordPass can recommend a super secure password, easily save and organize your login info, and then make logging into your accounts a breeze by autofilling all of your data for you, saving you from the headache of having to try 15 different passwords until you finally remember your login info. I know we've all been there. NordPass also offers user-friendly desktop and mobile apps and keeps you safe online by recognizing suspicious websites for you so you don't accidentally reveal your sensitive information. Best of all though, NordPass is currently offering their best deal of the year. Every purchase of a two-year plan will get 70% off plus one month free. So go to nordpass.com slash cggeek with the link in the description below to get NordPass for just $1.50 a month. That's right, just a buck 50 a month right now with the link in the description below. So now it's time for some materials. We can split the window and open up the shader editor over on the left here. Now, first off, you're gonna wanna select your original world model here. You can hit Alt H to unhide it. And under the materials, you're gonna wanna click that number to make it its own unique material so we don't affect our original world material. All right, you can hide the world again now. And with one of the shards selected, we can start editing this material by deleting the add and emission shaders. Now I'm gonna go Shift A and add in a mix shader along with an emission shader. Connect the emission to the bottom and our principal shader to the top and give the emission shader a strength of something like 55 in a nice reddish orange color. Now we can go shift A to add in a geometry node along with a map range node. Connect up the pointiness to the value of this node. And if you change the top value to something like 0.6 and use that as the factor on our mix shader, you can see that we start to add this hot emission shader to our world. Now, if you change that top value to something like 0.5, you can see that this is adding a lot more of that emission shader to the planet in a realistic sort of lava-like way. But the coolest thing is we can now animate that value to have the lava effect get stronger as the simulation goes. So jumping to frame 20 in the timeline, I'm gonna hover over the value of 0.6 and hit I to add in a keyframe. Then I'll scrub down to about frame 180, change the value to about 0.49 and hit I again to add in a second keyframe. Now I'm gonna add a noise texture for more detail. I'll give it a scale of nine, a detail of six, and about one under the distortion. If I add in a color ramp now and connect the factor to it, you can see crushing the blacks gives us a cool texture on those shards. But best of all, we can also keyframe this. So early in the simulation, you can insert a keyframe at about a position of 0.5, and then you can jump to later on in the timeline, give it less black value, hover over the position, and hit I to add in a second keyframe there. Now if we just drop in a mix RGB node into that factor, we can change it to multiply and add the color ramp to the bottom socket here. Changing it to a factor of one, this adds that new texture detail to our original effect. And as you can see, that looks a lot more like some hot lava. Ooh, that's hot. That's hot. 
And as you've probably noticed, you can keyframe all these values by hovering over your cursor and hitting I. So I'll add a keyframe on the emission strength about mid simulation and then have it fade out at the end of the simulation to something less strong like a value of 8 and add in another keyframe. Now quick tip, you'll want to select the icosphere and uncheck show emitter in the particle settings so that's not in your render. Sweet, so now what you want to do is select your original world and clouds model and just scale it up a little bit so it's bigger than all of your shattered shards towards the start of the simulation. Now you'll want to bring up the shader editor again and here you can see as the simulation goes on you don't see those already shattered shards until they burst out of the original mesh. But eventually we have to make our original world object not visible. So what I'm going to do is add in a mix shader along with the transparent shader at the end of our node setup and then just keyframe the factor starting at zero early on in the simulation and changing it to one towards the end of the simulation. This will make the world slowly disappear as the shards and lava take over everything. You can also make those clouds disappear over time by dropping in a mix RGB node into the alpha channel, giving it a black value, and then just keyframing the mix factor starting at zero and ending at one. All right, now it's time for the epic fire simulations. To start off, you'll wanna hit C and select some of the shards that get blasted very far from your planet. Just moving around in 3D space and selecting maybe a few dozen of these shards that really get blasted blown out. To make it easy to find these shards later, add them to a group by going Control G and name it something. Then go to your physics tab and add in the fluid physic. Here we'll change the type to flow. The flow type can be changed to fire and smoke and we're gonna change the flow behavior to be inflow. So it's adding smoke to the scene. The initial temperature is kind of how hot these fireballs will be. So I found a value of two to look pretty good. And then the surface emission is basically how big the fireball will be. And you'll wanna turn this down to be fairly small. Something like 0.2 is good. Now to add these fire settings to all of your selected objects, go Control L in the viewport and choose make links modifiers. Now you can see all of these shards have the same fire settings applied to them. Now if you ever want to select your fireball shards again, just go select, select groups, collection, and then whatever you named that collection. Cool! Here I'm just going to go control I and hide everything else so I only see these shards that I'm working with right now. And what I want to do is I want to keyframe the strength of that fireball so it kind of fades out the further it gets from the planet. So towards the beginning of the simulation, I'll hover over the surface emission and hit I to add a keyframe at point 0.2. Then I'll jump to later on in the simulation and change it to a value of zero, giving it another keyframe so our fireball will essentially burn out when it reaches that point. Go ahead and add keyframes to this value and all of the shards that you want to eventually burn out. All right, so now for our main epic fireball that is the center of the planet, we're gonna use that icosphere that we added in for the particles. Select that object and in the physics, you're gonna wanna add fluid to this as well. Change the type to flow again, the flow type to smoke and fire, and the flow behavior to inflow as we did before. For this, we want the initial temperature to be very hot, so we're gonna go all the way up to a value of three. And then under the flow source, I'm gonna give both the emission values 0.25. This is just something I found to work pretty good. And this is something you want to keyframe as well. So I added keyframes at the center of the simulation and then towards the end, I also had these fade out to a value of zero. Quick tip, you can check initial velocity and change both the source and normal to a value of about 0.25 for a little extra pow. Now you're going to want to go shift A and add in a cube, scale it up to fit all of the shards in this main cube as this is going to be the smoke domain where the simulation is going to happen inside of. Once you have it positioned, you can enable the fluid physics and change the type of this to be domain. Now just like the rigid body physics, we want this to happen slow, so change the time scale to 0.2 to make it feel like it's a larger scale simulation. Checking adaptive domain will give you a little higher resolution when possible. Under the gas settings, you're going to want to take the heat and density down to something like a 0.2. These values cause the smoke to rise faster when they're larger. We don't really want the smoke to be rising because it's outer space. Then there's the vorticity setting. This is super powerful, so be careful with it. But if value is about 0.06, can add some extra realisticness to your simulation. Then check dissolve and give it a time of 50. Uncheck slow, and this will just cause the simulation to disappear after time. As you can see, our low resolution simulation in the viewport is looking pretty cool already. Let's see what it looks like at a value of 64 divisions. And at this point, if you're happy with the way you're simulation is looking, you can go ahead and increase the resolution and bake. So for starters, you want to set your oven to 350. <laughs> it's a terrible joke. You'll want to change your cache type from replay over to all, and then you can enable noise for some extra detail in your simulation. I found cranking the strength and scale up to three looked pretty cool in this specific simulation. And then I changed the up res factor just to one as I found this made the most difference and any higher started taking really long to bake. So then for your final resolution, you're gonna wanna go pretty high, but it's gonna depend on what your computer can handle. For this, I'm gonna go 256 and that will take about a half hour on my computer, but your 
results might vary. On my final result, I went all the way up to 320, but you're gonna be waiting a few hours at that resolution. Okay, simulation is baked and we're ready to render some materials. So add a new material to your smoke domain, delete the principled shader and add in the principled volume shader, connecting the volume to the volume on the material output. Now you can go shift A and add in an input volume info. Connect the density to the density on your principled volume shader. And in rendered view, you can already see some of that simulation being rendered. Now if you go shift A and add a converter math node, dropping it in there and changing it from add to multiply, you can use this box bottom value to increase the density of the smoke. I'm gonna go all the way up to 85 for a very dense simulation. Lastly, you can go shift A and add in a color ramp, dropping it right into your nodes there. Control clicking to add another handle to your gradient here and adding some more gray to your color ramp. I found this just kind of eased the blockiness that you might see in your simulation a bit and made it look less noticeable. But we want more fire and less smoke in this simulation. So you can go shift A and add in an attribute node, type in the value of heat, and then add in a color ramp, connect the factor to the factor and the color to the emission color on your volume shader. If you control click into your gradient here and change this color to be a nice red hot orange, if you give some emission strength on your volume shader now, you can see that it's lighting up a little bit more like a fireball. Go ahead and tweak the colors now on this color ramp for your flame, a little bit more yellow looks better. Then you can duplicate that multiply math node, connect the factor to the top value, giving a value of three and connecting it to the emission strength. You can now use that value to control the amount of fire in your simulation. Lastly, we'll drop in one more color ramp node and drop it before the math node, crunch the black and pull the white way in, and then control click to add in one more black handle and pull it to the other side of the white. So we're black on both sides of our gradient. As you can see, this material hack kind of gives more detail to your simulation, adding more of a fire look to what used to be sort of a blown out fireball. And that's it for the fire and smoke material. Now it's important to note if you don't want those cones showing up in your final render, you're gonna have to select those cone objects and under the object info, uncheck show in renders. But now it's time to hit F12 and see what we get when we render. So here's a few of the renders now of the scene. As you can see, things are looking pretty hot and this rendered in about five minutes on the RTX 3090. Now, if you're having difficulties rendering this on your current hardware, you can turn off the volumetric cube I have in this scene by again going object info and turning off show and renders. This is just adding a bit of volumetric atmosphere to the scene, which adds to the realism, but also makes it take about two to three times longer to render. But now we can finish this off by jumping to the compositing tab and adding a few glows in. So shift A, add in the filter, glare node just drop it right in and if you change it from streaks to fog glow it looks great you can give it a threshold of something like eight and a size of nine to give it some nice glow effects then you can just duplicate that node and drop it in your node setup again except this time giving it a small size and a threshold of just one i just finished that off by adding a sharpen node and a lens distort node to add a very little amount of dispersion to the scene which just looks really cool on these space renders but there you have it we just blew up the world guys i know there's a lot of tips packed into this video but I didn't want to make it too long. So I did as condensed, but also as informative as I could. So I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video and you can let me know if you did with a like on the video or a comment down in the description below. But that's gonna do it for me guys. I think we caused enough destruction around here. Hope you had fun, learned something and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.